In this video, we're gonna talk about the interference tactic in chess, but at four different levels. Level one is beginner, level two is intermediate, level three is advanced, and level four is master. And even though we're gonna see the same exact tactic, you're gonna see how it shows up in different situations that are increasingly difficult. Sometimes it's mixed in with some other tactics, sometimes it's just a weird scenario that you're not used to seeing, but you're gonna get a chance to solve these puzzles at each different level and increase your understanding as we go through of exactly how to use the interference tactic. There's gonna be three examples for you at each level, level one, level two, level three, level four. You're gonna get a chance to pause, try to solve it yourself, and then I'll talk through the solution. So let's go ahead and jump right in. An interference tactic is when one piece is interfered from doing what it's, it's trying to do. So in this example, the knight is being attacked by our bishop, and it's being defended by this bishop. If we play the move d4, we chase the bishop away, but more importantly, we block it from defending the knight, or another way to say it, we interfere with the bishop's ability to defend the knight. And if you save the bishop, we take the knight. If you don't save the, you know, if you could also save the knight, but then we take the bishop. So either way, we're gonna win a piece, and at the most basic level, that's what it is. Usually it's a long range piece, like a bishop, a rook, or a queen, that is doing something, you interfere with what that piece is doing, and you take advantage of it, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right in to the level one positions, starting with this one right here. White has just played rook to c4. It's black's turn. What move should black play? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, notice that the rook here is being attacked, but it's also being defended by the queen. So if we could interfere with the queen's ability to defend the rook, that would be a good thing. Guess what? We can. E4 check. Unleashes the queen. White has to deal with the check so they don't have time to save the rook. And then after, let's just say they move the king, we could simply take the rook. They also could play queen g3, which is a little tricky because it attacks our queen, but we could simply trade the queens first and then grab the rook. We come out up a rook. Okay, let's go to the next one. Also level one here. White has just played bishop, takes h6. What move should we play here? If you had a chance to pause and look at that, Notice the rook on h1 is defending the bishop on h6. So we can't take it right now, we'd lose our rook. But what we can do is play bishop to h4 check, and once white moves, now we've interfered with the rook's ability to defend and we simply take the bishop, okay? So very straightforward, but a nice little way to win a piece. Let's go to the last level one position, which is right here. White has just played queen to b6. How do we use the interference tactic? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, this one's a little bit different, but still relatively straightforward when you think about it. We would like to get a queen. Our pawn is very far advanced. The only thing stopping us is this queen right here. So how do we interfere with the queen's ability to defend that square? Well, that's right, we just block with the bishop. And even though we're losing a piece, it doesn't really matter because we're still getting a queen at the end of it. That's a really, really good trade for us, right? And now we're gonna go into a winning position, okay? So this is a nice one to be aware of. Even if something is controlling a certain square, if you're interfering with something bigger that's going on, like in this case, a queen, we're about to get a queen, it's worth it. You could sacrifice the piece. It doesn't really matter. You're still going to be able to get the queen. Okay. So those are the level one positions. Hopefully that makes sense and you're starting to get in the flow of things. And now we're going to jump to level two. All right. So here's the first level two position. Black has just played queen to e4. How do we take advantage of this position as white? Or if you had a chance to look at that, the move is actually rook to e1, which is a pin tactic. Okay, so nothing about interference has happened just yet. But once we pin the queen, black actually responds with rook to b1. This is what you had to notice, that now we have a, a tough situation because we can't take the queen. It puts our king into check. So how do we deal with this? Well, this is where the interference came in, where we play the move bishop to c1. We are interfering with the rook, which was pinning us here, and now we've renewed the threat on the queen and black has no way to get out of this. If they take here, we simply take, it doesn't really help them. And because of this interference, the pin is going to win the queen, okay? So as they start to get more advanced, you're gonna notice how there's sometimes multiple tactics that kind of come together like we saw here. It started with the pin and then we finish it off with the interference. Okay, let's jump to the next level two position, which is right here. White has just played king to c4. What should we play here as black? If you had a chance to look at that, the first thing that you need to notice here is that this rook is under attack by our king. Now, at the moment, we can't really take advantage of that because it's defended. However, if we start with a check here, notice white's king doesn't have a lot of places that it can go to. The only square it can go to 
is right here. But after that, we take here with check, and again, it doesn't have a lot of options. It's forced to go here, which does what? Interferes with the rook's ability to defend the rook. And this is an important point. It doesn't always have to be your own pieces that are interfering. In this case, we forced white's king to interfere on their own pieces. Okay, so that's a very important thing. And now we can simply take here and we get a free rook. All right, let's go to the next level two position. Right here, black has just played king to d3. What move should we play here as white? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, so the first thing that you need to notice is we would like to get a queen, but we can, or black's gonna just sacrifice their bishop and then their king's probably gonna invade. It doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get more than a draw. So what if we go bishop to h6 with the idea of interfering with the bishop's ability to defend, right? That's a great idea. The only thing black can do is grab a pawn and try to do something with their own pawn. Now we can interfere. They have to take, and guess what? We get the queen. Now this one is not quite over because they also get the queen, and there was a little follow-up here that you had to notice, which was the skewer. Okay, this is another type of tactic, which we haven't really talked about in this video, but when you have a high value piece in front, another piece behind, you force that piece to move, and then you can grab the piece behind. Okay, so it ends with the skewer, but that interference there with the bishop was what you really needed to notice. Okay, so that's the end of level two. Now we're gonna go to level three and look at some of these advanced positions. All right, here's the first position from level three. It's white to play. And before I let you pause and think about this, I wanna just mention one thing. If you're enjoying this video, I've created a brand new course which has an entire section just with videos like this. There's like 20 different lessons on all different kinds of tactics, ranging from queen sacrifice, sacrifices to removing the guard to desperados, you name it, we covered it. Videos just like this takes you all the way through everything you need to know about tactics. And that's just one section in the course. It's called Breaking 1500. It's, I've been spending months creating this thing. It's gonna be great. If you're below 1500, it's absolutely what you need. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. But now go ahead, let's get back to the video. Pause, and what do you think white should play in this position? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, so this one, even though it's advanced, it's really not that hard. And what you'll find is that sometimes the advanced ones are actually just like weird things that if you've seen it, it's pretty easy. If you haven't seen it, it might cause a problem for you. So a lot of people, when they're in check here, would think, well, I have to play bishop f1, that's the only move, and then start thinking from there. But actually, you can play this move. And even though it looks like a terrible move, like I'm just giving up the bishop for free, it's with check, and it's actually checkmate. Black has no moves. It's just game over, checkmate in one move. But you had to understand that you could interfere with the check at the same time that you deliver checkmate. Okay, so that's why it ends up in the advanced camp. I think, honestly, this one was, was really easy for me, but I've seen this idea before. And I think if you're a beginner or an intermediate, maybe this could be advanced if you hadn't if you hadn't thought about the idea of actually putting someone in check and blocking check at the same time. Okay, let's go to the next level three one here. Black has just played rook to d4. It's white's turn. What should we play here? You had a chance to look at that. So what's going on here is that we want to get a queen. I mean, that's the I ideal situation, but the rook is blocking us. So we can actually interfere by putting a piece in front of that and then get the queen. The question in this puzzle and the tricky part was which piece do we use? Because if you use the wrong one, it's not going to work out, okay? So the correct answer is moving the knight because it's a check, and that check is important. So this forces black to either take with the bishop, in which case we get the queen immediately, and we're happy, or they take with the rook, in which case we could trade and then get the queen, or they could sacrifice, but either way, we're gonna be up a rook in that situation. So however you look at it, it wins a rook for us. Okay, if you thought you could play the rook over, it doesn't work, and here's why. Because they will play rook to e4, check, we have to move our king somewhere, and then they will just sacrifice here, and yes, we can take it, but the game goes on, and we're up a piece, but black has all these pawns, and it's like, I don't really know if we're gonna actually win this, okay? So it was not quite as good. So you had to understand the difference, and this is where they can get tricky. When you have multiple options, you have to calculate each one and choose the best one. Even though both of these are technically kind of an interference, one works and one doesn't, right? 
Okay, let's go to the next level three one right here. Black has just played king to a8. What move should we play here as white? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, so you might notice that the king is kind of uh, in trouble. Our queen is here. We would like to take this, but we can't. So one move that you might have thought about was rook to b1. This is not the right move, by the way, because black simply says rook to b8. Okay, I've defended your threat. I'm threatening to take you, and we don't really have anything left to do. Okay, so that doesn't work. What you had to notice was that we can actually interfere with the queen's ability to defend this pawn. And the way that you do that is with knight to d6. Now, knight to d6 is such a powerful move because not only is it interfering with this, it's also threatening checkmate. So black has to deal with the checkmate. They don't have time to like do something like this to defend the pawn or something like queen, you know, d7 to defend because we have checkmate, okay? So they have to either play rook b8 or take our knight. That's it. If they play rook b8, we simply come in here and then we get checkmate like this the queen no longer supports that, right? And if they take our knight, which you had to notice, was that we also could take here, and then we had the follow-up checkmate with the rook. Okay, so the key feature was getting our queen to c6, but we couldn't because of black's queen, therefore interfere with it with knight to d6, and everything else falls into place. Okay, so that's the last level three one. Now it's time to go to level four. These are the master level puzzles, and it's the same tactic but like I said before, a lot of times what you're going to notice is it's kind of mixed in with a bunch of other stuff. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky to identify the interference part. So let's go ahead and take a look at level four. All right, so here's the position. White has just played king to h1. It's black's turn. What move should black play next? Had a chance to think about that. This one is tricky because, of course, it looks like we have the rook. We would like to checkmate. But if we go there now, it doesn't work. White just simply comes over and blocks us, and we're going to lose. So what you needed to notice was that you can play queen to e4 check. And if the king moves, you just have checkmate. So that's pretty straightforward, which means now they're going to play f3. But by playing f3, you interfere with the rook's ability to come over. So again, we see this idea of using your opponent's pieces as a way to interfere. It's not always your piece. It could be your opponent's. And then you can play queen h4 check. It's the same type of idea, but now this move just simply loses. Okay, so there you go. And it wasn't really too difficult. It was just that subtle thing about making them use their own pawn to interfere with the rook. Okay, let's go to the next level four position, which is right here. White has just played rook f to c1. What move should black play here? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, so there's kind of a lot going on in this position. Obviously, the big threat is the attack on our queen. We do have this, which is nice. We'd like to be able to take that, but of course, we don't want to lose our queen. So the way that we do this is knight to c5, and we're interfering with the rook attacking our queen, but at the same time, we're creating a threat here. And the reason that this is a master level puzzle is because there's a lot of different moves that could happen in this position, and you kind of had to, to calculate those, but the main line was bishop takes d4, what do you do here? Well, you take the queen, and then when they take our queen, we take their rook, and even though our knight is hanging here, so is white's knight. And at the end of everything, let's just say they take us, we take them, if you count up the material, we're just up a rook. Yeah, we got an extra rook from that exchange. But it was tricky because there were so many different pieces, so many different captures, so many different potential moves, and... But at the end of the day, the interference part really wasn't wasn't that bad. It was like, here's the attack. I just interfere, and I create some counter threats at the same time, right? That's all it really was. So this is common with these advanced master level ones. It, it, usually it's not that difficult or different from the beginner ones. It's just mixed in a bunch of other stuff and identifying, wait a second, where's the interference at? Sometimes can be tricky, okay? Let's look at the last one that I have for you guys. Master level, level four. Black has just played rook to e8. What should white play here? All right, if you had a chance to look at that. So whenever I have a position like this, you always want to identify what's the weakest spot in the opponent's position. And what do you guys think the answer to that question is? Well, it's g7, right? This is definitely the weakest spot because if we could go there, that's just simply checkmate. And it's actually not that far away. It's literally just two moves. The problem is if we go there right away, black says, I'll just block and defend and I don't really have anything as white. So what do we do? We need to stop the queen from going there. So how do we do that? We interfere with the move rook to e7. And if they take us, guess what? 
We don't take back because then we lose our pawn. We just go for checkmate, queen h6. And black has no way to stop this except by sacrificing their queen. That's the only way. So that's, that's literally it. And, and again, it's not that difficult. It's just a question of, did you notice what the major threat was? And did you identify that this was the way to stop it, right? Uh, and by the way, if black tries some other move, we're still gonna go here, right? Because the queen needed to be able to get back there and there's just no other way for, the, you know, if they do something like this, queen h6, how are they gonna get back here? They can't, right? They just can't stop it. So that's it. That's the interference tactic. Shows up in a lot of different ways. Whenever you have the long range pieces, bishops, rooks, queens that are doing something, something that's causing you a problem in the position, think about an interference. Think about, can I put a piece in between or force one of their pieces in between? Maybe that's the solution that you need. Don't forget, links in the description if you want to check out the brand new course, Breaking 1500, which has just one out of 10 different sections in the course, but one of them is related to lessons just like this, where we cover all the different tactics. I'll see you guys next time. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.